All right, I see you, Podcast Juice. Let's do this. Hey everybody, welcome back to Prince's Friend, exploring music through Prince. And I don't know if all of you have listened to the latest Podcast Juice, a podcast on Prince episode. It actually was a really fun listen where all of the hosts came on and the challenge was to pick one song from each of the five decades that Prince made music that you would have represent that decade. And, and they said like everybody's criteria would be different. Maybe it's your favorite. Maybe you think it's the best. Maybe you just think it exemplifies the era. It's, it's kind of hard to like pick exactly like one song for some of these decades is ridiculous. The cool thing was though, is that the topic itself was brought to the show by our good friend, Chris Lacey. And the interesting about their choices, because obviously they went 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s, and then 2010s, was that I think I agreed with a different one of the people on the show each time. Uh, so I thought it was kind of interesting. So some of mine actually do match theirs. So what I wanted to do though, was kind of do a reaction video to that. So what I would say is, if you haven't listened to it already, go listen to it. There's a link in the description. And I, but I also want to share kind of what my favorite of each of the decades was. And I think for me, I'm going to be choosing kind of the, th the song that exemplified that decade, not necessarily my favorite song or the one that I listen to a lot, but I think it's going to be the one that best represents each of those eras. And it's, and it's tough. Like a couple of them, I, I fought back and forth a bit and I might even change it after this video, but I guess we'll have to see. But also don't forget to hit like, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell notification. So you always know when Princess Friend releases a new video. All right. So starting with the seventies, um, my choice for the seventies, there's only a a couple of albums to actually choose from just for you and Prince. So I actually chose I'm Yours. And I think somebody on the Prince podcast actually did choose that one. But for me, I'm Yours was like the perfect rock track, but also had a lot of funk in it, had a lot of soul in it. And I think it set the bar high for Prince. Uh, so I definitely, I'm Yours, like I'm Yours was the song that I would use back when I was listening to that album a whole lot, when I had first got into Prince and people would be like, oh, you're listening to Prince? Isn't that the guy who has like the frilly lace and stuff? And I'm like, yeah, but like he shreds the guitar. And they're like, what? And I'm like, yeah, listen to this. And then they'd be like, okay, that's pretty good. And I'll be like, yeah. And he did all of that himself. All of those instruments are just him. And it would like blow their mind. It would just be over. So I think I'm yours. And as good as like a song like Soft and Wet is, uh, I think that that was like the, you know, the first radio hit. Um, I want to be your lover, really good. Why you want to treat me so bad? could be argued that it has, you know, just as good guitar work and stuff as I'm Yours. But I think I'm Yours is going to be my final choice because it's just a damn good song. I think it really kind of seals the, the 70s for Prince. So now we're going to go to the 80s. And I think the 80s was likely the hardest of them to do. <laughs> and I think it's because the 80s has the most like big hits, the most hype, the most everything kind of going on in the Prince world, you know, which is why it's a lot of people's favorite era. But for me, I think my choice is going to be Raspberry Beret. Um, I feel like Raspberry Beret was kind of what Prince wanted out of music. He wanted to be able to make a nice song, sounds great, has great vocals, tells a fun story, allows him to collaborate with friends, allowed him to kind of mess around with like new techniques and video making. Uh, you know, like before that, it was really a lot of hype. And you know, it was a lot of like, 1999 was giant. And all of these different things were like breaking ground and changing his entire sound and everything. And I feel like Raspberry Beret and Around the World in a Day in general was kind of the album where he just started just being himself. And he's like, I'm gonna do something different over here and like y'all might make a big deal about it but to me it's just me being me and I think Raspberry Beret itself is uh, first off it's a great song I actually it was one of my choices for my top five from around the world in a day so you can go check out that video but it is just it's a magnificent song I think it's catchy everybody can sing it 
everybody knows the words. It, I think Raspberry Beret is gonna be the song. If I had to give a second choice, it might have been Kiss, possibly. <laughs> uh, that's that's a little tougher because I think that one was just as big a hit. And not that I'm choosing it because of the hits, but to me, just the feel and the overall attitude and everything kind of going on in Raspberry Beret, I think is I think is why I'm gonna pick it. So now we go on to the '90s, and whew, all right. So for me, uh, it's not gonna be a song from any of the actual albums. My choice for song for the '90s is actually a B-side. And it's called, wait for it, Rock and Roll is Alive and It Lives in Minneapolis. I think for me, it was the ultimate 90s Prince track. It's got the epic guitar in there. Everybody in the band, because that's when he was with the original MPG, everybody got a chance to show off. There's a bass solo, there's a drum solo, there's keyboards, there's organs, there's everybody gets a, a spot to shine there, which I really dig. It was also a rebellious song because it was written in response to a song called Rock and Roll is Dead from Lenny Kravitz. So you had that kind of like attitude like, yeah, you know, you might be saying it's dead, but guess what? It lives here. Also, I think it's just kind of the pinnacle of the style that Prince had during the slave era. And as much as I love the Emancipation era and the music that came out after the mid 90s, this for me, it was like, you know, climbing, 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 and then you're there. And then for me, he kind of just stayed there for the rest of the 90s, but rock and roll is alive and it lives in Minneapolis. I just think it's like, it's one of those songs that I just can't stop listening to. Like I could listen to it a million times in a row and I would be like, let's put it on one million and one times, let's go. <laughs> so for the 2000s, uh, and this one might shock you that it's not a song for musicology uh, that I've chosen. For me, I've chosen a song that was outwardly political and it was kind of obvious. I think it also kind of exemplifies the way that Prince thought in the 2000s. Uh, some would say conspiracy theory, but he was really kind of opening himself up to more ideas, kind of thinking about like, what if this is true? How are people treated by the government, especially black people and there was a whole lot of stuff going on in his music as well during this time so my choice for the 2000s is dreamer so all of that that I just said on top of that epic rock track you'll notice that most of mine have been rock tracks so far I think Raspberry Beret was not that much of a rock track but the other three are <laughs> but it has that amazing guitar solo like two of them in the song as well as the drumming and the bass like Everybody in the band, they were kicking it on that song. Uh, the song itself is great. The message is wonderful. Like, I just dig Dreamer a lot. And then the final song that's going to encompass the 2010s. This one was a little tough for me, but you will not be surprised that it does come from Artificial Age. And my choice is Breakfast Can Wait. And the reason that I picked Breakfast Can Wait is I feel like it kind of hits a lot of the same notes of all of the rest of the songs throughout his career. It's funky, definitely. It's got some sexiness to it that you just can't deny. The song itself is about sex. But also it's got some playfulness, kind of like what you would see on a door. It's got the real music by real musicians kind of from the 2010s. And it just has a bunch of like fun analogies, fun wordplay. And I feel like in the 2010s, Prince was still trying to kind of find like a new sound. And on Artificial Age, I feel like he found that and this song was kind of the greatest amalgamation of, I feel, the new direction that he was wanting to take and the old Prince kind of ways of doing things. So I would say Breakfast Can Wait. If I had to pick a second one or if Breakfast Can Wait was off the table or something, I would pick You Know. Uh, everybody knows that that is actually my very favorite Prince song currently. Uh, <laughs> I love that song so much. You know, because just the beat is just so amazing. Mm. Uh, mm. Anyway, so those are my five choices. So for the 70s, it was I'm Yours. With the 80s, it was Raspberry Beret. The 90s was Rock and Roll is Alive and It Lives in Minneapolis. The 2000s was Dreamer. 2010s was Breakfast Can Wait. The last question that Michael Dean asks on the podcast, though, was what decade resonated with you the most? And I think we all know it's not going to be the 70s or the 80s. Sorry. 
And you know what? My quick answer would be, well, obviously the 90s. I was a 90s kid. That's where I got into Prince. That's where I was in like my pinnacle height of me listening to him every day and like nothing but Prince. At the same time, I look at what I listen to nowadays and most of what I listen to nowadays comes from the 2000s. So I actually would say that I feel like the 2000s era really kind of speaks to me more. 2131, Musicology, Chocolate Invasion, Planet Earth, Lotus Flower, all the, I mean, there's a lot of amazing music that Prince did in the 2000s that I listen to on, like on a constant basis. Like I listen to those all the time. And I dip back into the 90s every so often. I dip back into the 80s less often. I go forward more into the 2010s. So I listen to mostly 2000s and then I kind of go more into the 2010s. I mean, I have to say, but Prince and For You rarely come up in my rotation. I have great fondness for those albums and I feel like those are great albums to start an amazing career. But I've said this a million times before, you don't do something for 30 to 40 years and you get worse at it. So for me, Prince is amazing and he kept getting better the further along in his career that he got. Uh, he was playing around with more styles, he was playing around with more sounds, he was doing different genres. He didn't feel like he needed to shoehorn popular things into his songs. He would make whatever the hell he felt like making at the time. <laughs> so anyway, that's my decade that resonated the most with me. And I hope that you enjoyed this. And if you did, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, to the channel, hit the bell notification. Also, don't forget to go check out my boy, Chris Lacey, going and hanging out with Aunt Pooh, Big Sexy, and Michael Dean over on the Prince Podcast. Go check that out. Again, there's going to be a link in the description. Go listen to that. It's longer than this video because it's uh, four people on there. But I wanted to add my fifth voice on there just, you know, because I can. Anyway, may you live to see the dawn. I love you all. Check you in the next video.